Okay, y'all. <laughs> um, it's cool out here, and I just want to come out here and just talk for a second. Um, <laughs> you know how my seconds go? Just, just for a second. That turns into 30 minutes. Um, not my intention, but anyway. Um, you know, I was sitting there. I was something funny. I thought I'd... <laughs> the... I was sitting there at the table doing my makeup this morning, and yeah, I do my makeup almost every day. I mean, I don't always, but most of the time I do wear some makeup. Um, I don't want to quit trying. <laughs> I'm not going to try, quit trying. Of course, in front of the camera, I definitely do, but then at home, just by myself, I normally wear a little bit. Um, but I was sitting there, and in the other room, my husband is watching uh, Star Trek. The one with the Borg. If you don't know Star Trek, you can find out what the Borg are. And, um... I was thinking to myself, just, I mean, hearing this in the other room, I'm thinking, you know, the board were so power hungry, and they were so, but they were, their technology was so far advanced. I mean, what they could do was amazing, and I thought, gosh, if they just added a little compassion and humanity and kindness to that species, they'd be a fabulous species. And then <laughs> into my mind popped, just like the Democrats. <laughs> They do want you in their collective, um, and they're they're just about as ruthless and brutal and ignorant. Now, ignorant doesn't mean stupid. Ignorant means you don't know things, and you don't want to. As, and, and most of it's willing ignorance. They don't they don't want to know things. It's not that they can't learn. They just don't want to know. Um, but the today's Democrat is so brutal and ignorant and. Um, Judgmental. Actually, they're more judgmental than any Christian ever was. Um, and so uncaring of other people's feelings. Uh, the, the ruthlessness that they show is, is why they're winning, because they never stop. They never stop being brutal and ruthless. Ruthless means they don't stop. They're persistent. Um, that's why they... They manage to overrun some of the more pe the people with more traditional values and more Christian values. Um, but see now, what they are trying their best to take away the rights of veterans of the military in this country to own firearms. I'm thinking, wait just a dang minute. You mean the people who gave their lives in defense of this country? I mean, I'm not talking about people who just served four years, which is fine. I mean, that's that's good, too. But the people who gave their entire career and retired from the military, um, they, wanted, they want those people to have fewer constitutional rights than the average citizen. And yet, at the same time, they want to arm illegals because it's, oh, you can't do it for the Constitution. The Constitution, it's the Second Amendment. It's like... Wait a minute, you don't want our citizens to have firearms. Why would you let criminals have firearms? And yes, most of them are criminals. Yes, they are. The reports are staggering. What's coming across the border? I say, so you're going to defend the Second Amendment that it doesn't even really apply to non-citizens. The constitutional rights are not the same for non-citizens, nor should they ever be. Um, we couldn't look, I mean, after 9-11, a lot of that, Changed where it's like, or was clarified more that you couldn't, you had the right to hold these people. They're guilty of terrorism, domestic terrorism, or terrorism, not domestic, although some of that probably was domestic. Um, you can hold those people without their rights. But see, those are foreigners, they're not United States citizens. And yet they are holding United States citizens without their rights. J6, anybody? Um, but the Democrats are completely illogical and ignorant. Um, the average today's Democrat, my parents, I believe, voted Democrat. They voted for Jimmy Carter. God forbid, you know, I'll pop them for that one. Uh, but um, they would vote Democrat. But see, yesterday's Democrat was not the same as today's. My parents were very traditional, um, and I don't know why they were Democrats, honestly. They were both from Alabama. <laughs> I mean, I don't know why they were from. I don't know, I don't know why. But anyway. That's neither here nor there. Um, so I just want to, you know, it, just like the Borg, if you just, you just temper some of that power-hungry stuff and you add your smarts to it and you have a little compassion and kindness and humanity, you'd be a great species, Democrats. <laughs> um, okay, well, also, um, Friday, next Friday, um, we're getting our new heat pump installed to the tune of $6,800. I've already paid for half of that. We'll pay for the second half when they install it. That's 
one baby. Next go is my roof leak that's above my head over here. <laughs> I've got my cards that don't, I want to, subjects I want to talk about. Um, yeah, there's a roof leak up here. It shouldn't happen. It's only 11 years old, the roof. And uh, the guy said, oh, they put all the architectural shingles on wrong when they did it. Uh, that contractor that the renovation company hired, uh, the restoration company, you know, the one that comes to get your stuff when you have a house fire and they store it, and then when you get renovated, you bring it back. They, they hired these people. Not real smart. I hope they fired that guy afterwards. Anyway. Um, so I need to get that looked into and that fixed. And um, then I got moss growing on my roof because I got so many trees. Oh, brown thrasher. I got so many trees all over near the house. Big, big trees. Huge oaks right over the house. They drop limbs on it. Has, bro has broken my one of my uh, SUV windshields once because um, I don't have a garage or a carport. And uh, you know we got to get the moss off the roof. Uh, so I'm going to hire somebody to do that. There's a lot of things around here that can be done. Um, but my, um, let me tell you, we've been discussing this thing about building a house on the other lot. And the consensus now, my husband went down a rabbit hole looking about, looking at this. Um, the consensus at the moment is the housing market is going to crash. Very soon. It can't, it can't sustain what it's done. Um, somebody said, well, the prices, they still expect the prices to go up by five more percent. But, but for how long? I mean, five more percent is that five more percent in the next three months, and then it's going to crash. But people are saying it's going to crash. It's going to be worse than 2008. We we rode out 2008 here. We've been here since 2002. Um, and prices went down, and they went way back up. And uh, then they, you know, anyway. Um, right now, it's having a house built. It's kind of like diving off a cliff um, into fog and you don't know what's below it. That's kind of like it is. Uh, moving between houses is also like that, but building takes a lot longer than moving from one house to the other. So, um, one thing that's holding up the thing with my husband is his, his childhood. His father worked for Western Electric, which is no longer Western Electric. He was transferred numerous times within one within the year. And um, one year, my husband went to 13 schools, 13 different schools in one school year. He never had time to make friends. He didn't, he didn't end up with a lot of lifelong friends because he just didn't stay in one place long enough. And um, so this is the first place. We've been here 22 years this year in June. And he, he said, this is home. This is home. I like my view of the mountain over there. I can, on the other lot, I can still see the mountain. I can still see most of it, the top part of it. Um, but the other surrounding mountains, I don't, I can't see down there. And he likes his view from up here. Now, no matter what you think or what, you know, how much you want to stay, we still have the 10 steps that go up to the deck. He has made the lift, yes. The lift needs, he wants to have the platform of the lift fabricated in metal instead of the, the wood. It's in treated wood now, and it's, it's kind of sags on one corner. Um, because it, it, I mean it doesn't have support and it sags it's 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 bolted in and it's it's a wooden platform so what he wants to do is he wants to have a fabrication shop fabricate him a metal platform of course with anti-skid and anti-slip um, and he wants to improve the lift so that it's easy it's better for human beings to be on when I broke my leg I went up and down that in my wheelchair numerous times um, and it's invaluable when you have a lot of groceries to get in, you can just bring them up to that platform and lift them up to the deck. So going up and down the steps 15 times. Um, not that we had that many groceries anymore. We're saving money since we went carnivore, mostly carnivore. My husband's less carnivore than I am. Uh, but, you know, he won't listen. <laughs> he, he's doing what he can do. He's lost a lot of weight anyway. Um, so he has a family history. And as well, um, one reason, you know, I mentioned I don't like mobile homes, okay? I don't like mobile homes because they don't go up in value, or they didn't. Um, in fact, if you just have a mobile home, you can have your taxes are much less because they don't really tax your mobile home that much, um, at least in this state. So uh, anyway, my husband had in his childhood. His mother was 17 years old when he was born. They got married when she was 16. 17, he was born. So my mother, his mother was very young, very inexperienced, and not very wise. And his father, would, who's four years older than her, would do anything for her then. And um, so when the first mobile homes came out, and they had no HUD standards then. There were no standards like that then on those homes. They were trash, really. She thought it was the neatest thing to live in a trailer. So she 
had a hit, had a fit, had a hissy fit, I won't say hit, had a hissy fit until his father sold the brick home down, the brick home, and bought a trailer. Worst financial decision ever. And so he has horrible memories of bad financial decisions associated with mobile homes. And um, he's never, and he also have never felt like he was at home. He never felt like a place was truly home, just a place to put his stuff and lay his head. But see, he feels differently about this place now. And as much as I say to him and try to convince him, the lot next door is still home. We still know every inch of that land. We can still have some of the same view. It's just more private. It has less trees to get in the way of the house and drop leaves and all that. And I mean, not that I'm, I love trees, but next to the house, no. This is surrounded by giant oaks that it would be very tricky to take down. And it's messing up the roof, right? Um, so as much as I say that this is home, we've been here almost 22 years. And we've been married 48, so that's a big portion of the time that we've been married. Um, so that's where he's coming from with that. Um, he said, he said, he said, if we, if you want to do it, we'll do it. That's what he said. But see, I'm not somebody who can just say, well, I want what I want. And this is what I'm going to have. We've always made decisions together, and when we're not on the same page on a decision, we let it ride for a while, and we think about it, and then we try to make concessions with each other if we can. Some things you don't make concessions on, like, I don't want kids. Well, I do want kids. We can't have a kid, so you can't, you know, so it's, it's, it's one or the other. Um, but, you know, this, this house saying, we don't have to move. No, we don't have to. We don't have to. I just felt it would be better for the rest of our lives. But he's very comfortable here. This is where he loves. Now, I've got my space issues with this house. Um... And that's one reason I was going to give up my quilting. Because I don't have room for all the stuff that goes with it. I, I, it's not that I don't like it. Yes, I have a lot of machine problems. I've sold one machine. I'm going to sell the other one. Um, and probably a table that my husband made me. Because anything I would want would have a bigger behind, a bigger bigger base than the hole in that table is. And it would be difficult to cut it a uh, lot uh, bigger. Um, so, um, I think if I could, I have two chest of drawers in my bedroom. One is an antique chest of drawers that we bought, oh my word, when my children were tiny little things. And um, it was solid wood, well made. But I said, if I could get rid of, and I, I don't have to divest myself of a lot of clothing and stuff that I don't wear or can't wear because I, I'm, I'm probably 60 pounds lighter than I was at the top weight of my ever top weight in my life. And um, I, a lot of those years, uh, a lot of the last years we've lived here, I was actually um, 30 pounds heavier than I am now. So, uh, and my clothes don't fit. In fact, some of them are so big that they'd be indecent for me to try to wear. Um, you know, when you have sleeves, we have sleeves on a, a, a sweatshirt and they go like that far down beyond your hand because you just don't have the, the body to fill up the space in the cloth, you know what I'm saying. Um, so, I, if I can get rid of all the stuff in that particular um, chest of drawers, I would have another three feet of wall space to do what I need to do, and it, w it would not feel so crowded. Um, and I'm thinking about that, thinking, how in the world can I get rid of that stuff in there? My other chest of drawers is stuffed, and my, my bedroom closet is stuffed. I need new organizational ways to do things, I think, probably. No more storage errors, more storage things. My problem with my house is, even though the footprint is uh, says 1088 square feet, that's you know it has a partial basement but even though the footprint is 10 1088 square feet when you consider there's a bump out thing for the basement stairs because there is no hallway the basement steps to the basement it comes out from the wall a good you know several feet three three feet or so and then it's cross for the door to go down so that bump out the square footage of that bump out for the basement stairs takes up a lot of room and then in the, in the second bedroom there is a box i don't know how else to describe it there's a box that comes out for the wall, kind of where the basement stairs go down. And I assumed it was put there to make headroom for the basement stairs because there's no hall. And it just, you know, if you went down a certain place and you hit the floor coming in from the bedroom behind it, and you'd have to duck. And I think it, I think it was for headroom. My husband says, I'm not too sure about what is in that box because it takes up a good three by three feet of room out of a very, already a very small bedroom. And because of those two things, and of course the square footage, the walls themselves, and I don't have a lot of walls because my house is basically two sections. Um, it's living, dining, kitchen on one side, and the other is two bedrooms and the bathroom. And um, there's not a lot of wall space, but those two things take up a lot of space. 
and I'm thinking 1088 square feet on the outside measurement. However, if you really calculate the measurements, the, the square footage we're actually living in, it's probably 900 something square feet. This is why I'm having space issues in there. When, when I, that's why the people who want to go into tiny homes are thinking, I hope you don't have any hobbies because you won't fit. And you want to go into a 200 square foot, a th th two to 300 square foot home with three children? Are you nuts? <laughs> are you just nuts? And then they build storage buildings because they can't fit everything in that they want to keep. So that's my problem with moving. I'm trying to think about how we can do that. Um, my husband has even said, yeah, yeah, I mean, the next thing we do is going to have to be the, the roof leak and the moss on the roof. And then I want to finish my fencing. I'm going to finish. My fencing is kind of, you know, it was old livestock fencing from many years ago when we first had the first chicken flock. This whole, this whole side over here uh, behind my gardens and everything, that side is um, now horse fencing, good quality horse fencing. <clears throat> it holds up better to the deer jumping over it and hitting it and bending it over. It holds up much, but it's much stronger fencing. It's very expensive fencing, but I got that whole side done with horse fencing. Now, if I can just get the rest of it done with horse fencing, I would be a happy camper. There's so many things to do with this house that would make it easier to function in. Um, and it's to do with my, my hobbies. I, I really, I have crochet and I have quilting. You wouldn't think that's a lot of hobbies to cram in there. But when you don't have that much room, thank God the man who built this house had the foresight to put in a very large master bedroom closet. And honey, it is full. I need to get all the clothes out that I don't wear, won't wear, can't wear. And if I could just get my husband to do the same... Cause he don't wear half of what he's got in his closet. Um, donate all those clothes, those clothes, and they're in good shape. I mean, a lot of those clothes were sent to the dry cleaners. <laughs> By the way, <laughs> Michael, Michael, Michael 58, <laughs> my subscriber Michael, not my son Michael. Um, your box is on the way. <laughs> he's calling me about the box. Uh, no, 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 it's, it's on the way, okay? It says I'll be there Tuesday. Anyhow. <laughs> Okay, so what was I talking about? I don't even know. Um, something about the house. I don't know. But anyway, I guess I explained enough to let you know why it's hard for um, me to get space in the house and why um, uh, it's not just the space thing, though. I mean, space can be ingeniously divided up in some way or storage units or uh, in clever storage um, methods and things like that, but you can't change the land and you can't change the steps. <clears throat> And he, apparently he thinks he can still manage those. So, um, I don't think he's on board with, with that. We've explored it, but he's not going home. Um, also, <clears throat> this is more for the ladies. Excuse me, I've been talking too much now. <clears throat> this is for the ladies. Um, and, man, you can bow out hell if you want to. Um, people keep, this is not really just for, it's not really just for, for ladies, I guess, in a way. Um, People have, have said to me often, they'll say, wow, your skin looks so good. What do you put on your skin to make your skin look so good? Well, and I said, you know, no, I use beef tallow for a moisturizer at night. And, you know, I use some very inexpensive serums, you know, like, um, I think I have three now. I have Matrixel's 3000 serum, which is, has vitamin C and hyaluronic, hyaluronic acid in it, things like that. And I use a vitamin C serum. I use retinol serum. And then, no, they're not expensive, okay? They're not the expensive ones. This is very cost effective. And at night, I will put on uh, beef tallow. Sometimes I'll mix it with a nighttime uh, wrinkle cream or whatever. Um, a cheap one. Um, and, and, but sometimes I just put pure beef tallow. Sometimes beef tallow mixed with a little castor oil on my skin. Well, my skin, I have wrinkles, okay? You can't get to almost 68 years old without wrinkles. Okay? You just can't. Um, no, I'm not going to have Botox. I, I don't, I can't stand the thought of somebody injecting needles into my face that to me is just oh my god why would you voluntarily do that <clears throat> although women do all kinds of torturous things for beauty or for, to try to look not as old as they are um but, you know, I, I earned every wrinkle okay anybody's raised children has earned every wrinkle right um i've never smoked so any mouth wrinkles that i have are from genetics okay i've never smoked um, most people have dull skin and mouth wrinkles have been smokers at one time or another um or just eat really bad and, and I've taken care of my skin since I was a teenager. It's not my makeup, so guys, if you're still here, it's, I'll get back to the point. I'll get to the point here in a minute. Um, I've done that since I was a teenager. 
I went through acne. I went through ch having children. I went through times when my skin was extremely oily. Um, and it's still got some oil to it. I mean, it's not a lot. It's just in the teeth. Throwing a couple of teas on, right? Um, not excessive anymore, but it's still there. Uh, so, I've been through a lot of stages with my skin where it didn't look so good. And about 10 years ago, I'm just guessing how long it was. I remember looking in the mirror and going, what is that? And it was like, it was like two wrinkles kind of formed a weird puffy place on my face. And I went, what is that? No, I thought, what did I do? Is this kind of stung by something? And I realized it was just a new wrinkle. <laughs> it was just wrinkles that did were arranged weird on my face and made a strange raised area. And I went, oh my gosh, that's a wrinkle. Are you kidding me? That looks terrible. And um, it just, I just didn't notice it until it was there that day. And I noticed my skin was kind of not real bright, you know, it's kind of dull down. And I thought, what am I doing? I'm aging too fast. I gotta do something. So I really got more intense about doing things for my skin, even though I'd always done it. I'd always um, used moisturizer and, you know, and early on in acne and stuff, like Stridex and that kind of stuff. But um, I, didn't have, I didn't have bad acne. I never did, really. It's a surprise considering the kind of crap I ate, uh, the sugar I ate. Um, but anyway, um, and then about five years ago, I started becoming, eating more keto, ketogenic, and then I, I narrowed that down to ketovore, which is mostly animal-based, some vegetables, not many, um, and then to mostly carnivore. Every once in a while, I'll grab out a jar of our, our very delicious Crowder peas from the stash, and we'll have some Crowder peas, and they're, they're excellent, but I don't continue eating that. In the summer, I will grow tomatoes, and I have tomatoes with my ground beef bowls or my ground or my, my burger patties. Um, but that's in season, and I might have a pear off my tree if I was going to have any pears this year. Thanks to the squirrels, I'm not going to have anything. The blue, they ate the blooms. I watched them do it. And peaches, believe it or not, two different frosts haven't killed all the peach blossoms. I'm amazed. I was like, God put a holy heat blanket over, over my peach tree. That's <laughs> what I was thinking. And I thought, well, you know, weather's weather. Can't do anything about it. I mean, what can you do? It's way too big to put a, a cover over or anything. So, um, and I'll eat that in season. I, nothing better than a warm peach off a tree. Nice and juicy and ripe. Nothing better. Um, but other than that, I don't buy stuff to eat. I used to eat frozen yogurt and, and fruit smoothies in the summer. I lived off of those. And I stopped eating fruit for the most part. A few berries here and there. I've got blueberry bushes, and there was a lot of strawberries that's worth eating. Um, and I might pop all those in my mouth. That's, you know, that's it. But that's in season. Uh, and so for the last, I should say for the last five years, I've been eating mostly carnivore. Both of us have. Me more than, I'm a little bit more dedicated to it than my husband is. And he's got a lot more weight to lose. I don't really have, I can stand to lose another 10 pounds. But other than that, I'm pretty much okay. Not much you can do about the 67 year old skin, you know, the around places on your body that, you know, just doesn't want to tighten up. Well, you can't really tighten it up. I mean, it's stretched and it's old and there's nothing much you can do about it. Um, but, you know, about five years ago, my diet got very, very pure for the most part. And um, I noticed, and I kept up my skincare like I'd always done, just religiously in the morning and at night made sure I didn't miss it. I didn't go to bed with makeup on and I, you know, totally cleanse my skin. In the morning, all I do is just do a warm water rinse in the morning. I don't wash it in the morning. Just rinse off the skin treatments that were over, on me overnight. And uh, I noticed something. I noticed that my skin was more bright, let's say. Um, I noticed some wrinkles had lessened. They're not gone and they're not gonna be gone because, you know, my age is what it is. And I'm not going to stay out of the sun either. But um, it, beauty comes. I'm not saying I'm beautiful. Please don't say I didn't say, I didn't say that. I just say your skin health. I say skin health. And the way it looks, the vitality of it comes from in the inside out. It comes from the inside out. Okay. And no amount of skin treatments are going to help you if you're eating crap. Your skin shows what's going on in the luminosity in the dullness, in the wrinkles, in the in the um, dry patches, in the discolorations. Now, people will blame discolorations on the sun. 
Well, if you got sunspots early on, let me tell you why you got them. It wasn't because you didn't have sunscreen on. What it was because of is because the toxins coming out of your skin and then getting exposed to that the sun. The sun plus toxins coming out of your skin. Your skin is an organ. It's the biggest organ in your body. Toxin coming out of your skin and that sun hitting it, that's what's causing your skin cancer. And I have a feeling that this overuse of sunscreens is going to bite us in the rear. Now, I don't overuse sunscreens. In fact, I rarely use a sunscreen. I do have a face moisturizer that has a 30 SPF in it. I don't always use that one. Um, if, I'm, if it's going to be a rainy day, I don't even bother. <laughs> I mean, if I'm going to work at the garden all day, I might use that one. But we need vitamin D, and we get the vitamin D, which is essential to all health, through our skin, right? Our skin and our eyes. And uh, overuse of sunscreen is a problem. I think it's causing some skin cancers. And some doctors think so, too. So I'm not a big proponent of sunscreen. Oh, my God, I use my SPF. You look at makeup channels. Oh, well, God, I did my skincare, and I put on my SPF. We can't go without SPF. There's one dermatologist that says, you've got to have SPF, and she glops it on like crazy. But you know what she is? She's a vegan. She's a vegan. I'm thinking, that's why it's sun damage. It's probably because of that. The poison's coming out of your skin. Um, but anyway, I just want to let you know that it's, and I consider that eating that way and your health as part of your preps for, for bad times, the stronger your body is when the grid goes down, the better. Just to sum it up, and you can't be strong if you're consuming seed oils and sugar and processed foods, grains, the worst, grains. Um, you can't have optimal health when you're consuming that stuff. Even vegetables have me me defense mechanisms that are like toxins, that they release toxins. If you eat too much, um, what is it, Scott? Um, Something has a lot of arsenic. Some of this, I forgot what the vegetable has a lot of arsenic in it. And if you eat great amounts of it, thinking you're doing your body good, you're doing your body some harm. Um, oxalates are these defense mechanisms that come out. And a lot of people have trouble when they first start eating a carnivore or keto or diet because apparently they have heavy sensitivity to the oxalates. And they, they go through a period of what they call oxalate dumping, which means the toxins are coming out of your body. And it's making you feel bad. It's not the diet that you're eating. If you're eating carnivore or ketogenic, it's not the diet making you feel bad. Now, when we say ketogenic, I don't mean the ones with the keto snacks and keto drinks and keto. That's a marketing tool. That's a marketing tactic. Um, don't eat that on keto snacks, okay? If you want to make a snack, browned butter bites. You basically you basically put butter in a, in a pan and you stir it constantly until it, st it quits foaming and starts to brown a little bit. You stop, you pour it in a mold, like a silicone mold, and you put those pop, let those cool in the fridge and then they're thick enough to put them in a bag, put them in the freezer. Um, and then you put, and you can sprinkle salt on it. I wouldn't advise using salted butter for that because it's too salty. And you don't know what kind of salt it is. Um, but you use regular unsalted butter, real butter, not, I can't believe it's not butter, but you know, you better believe it because it's not good for you. Um, and you put the brown butter bites and then you just, you can sprinkle it. And you know what, what's even good is when you pour it in, if you have some bacon crush, sprinkle some bacon in each one. Oh, now there's a snack. If you're not consuming carbohydrates for energy, you have to get them from fa the energy from fat. You should be eating, if you're eating a carnivore ketoboard diet, you should be eating over 50% fat. Yeah, I said that, believe it or not. Now, if you're eating a standard American diet and you're getting that much fat, it's not going to do any good. It's going to harm you because it's, you know, it's not, you can't do it any, it can't do you any good when you're um, an adulterating it with all the poisons of a standard American diet, or worse, the standard vegan diet. So anyway, that's what I want to tell you. It's not that the stuff, because I think, um, Somebody said, well, I've been using that for a month and I haven't seen any difference. Well, what are you eating? What are you eating? And if you've, if you've never done anything for your skin or haven't done that much for your skin, at a certain time in life, um, you know, you've got a lot of catching up to do. And a month is not going to do it. And you can't, and it's not going to do it anyway. Some topical is not going to help your skin as much as it could if you were cleansing from the inside out. So I'm sorry this took so long. This is just, um, I just wanted to mention that. It's not what you put on it. It's what you put in your body. And it doesn't, then you don't have the toxins coming out of your skin and dulling your skin, giving you excess wrinkles and uh, all that kind of stuff. And watch out the SPFs. At the very least, don't use a chemical sunscreen. Uh, even the natural sunscreens, I mean, I don't even use those very much. If I know I'm going to be out in a very intense sun for a long time, I might put a sunscreen on, but I don't bother every day with that. And I don't burn. I don't have a lot of sun damage on my face. I have one spot over here somewhere that I don't know where it came from. It was it may be sun damage from many years ago. I was never a sun worshiper, per se. I never laid out in the sun a lot. I never went swimming, because I can't swim when I can't see, and you can't wear glasses in the pool. 
Oh, uh, I just was never a swimmer anyway. I know how to swim, yes, I do, but I just don't do it. Don't, I don't enjoy that activity. Um, so anyway, that's what I want to say to people who are saying, oh, your skin is so wonderful, what do you put on it? And I'm thinking, it's not sort of put on it. I mean, yeah, that's part of it, but that's just the second part. The first part is what do I put in my body? So, um, it's kind of chilly out here, and uh, my chickens haven't gone out yet. Bonnie is probably dying. I talked to my vet friend, and she she said, that's really sad. She said, it, it appears that it crusted over with dried tissue instead of making new tissue. And I said, well, could that be because she has a heart problem and her circulation is not up to snuff? When you have bad circulation, wounds don't heal like they should. And she's old, too. She's about to turn eight. Uh, and a Brahma. Eight and a Brahma. I mean, it's like eight and a giant Great Dane. A Great Dane doesn't live that long. Um, so she's a Brahma, the chicken version of a Great Dane. And she doesn't, they don't live as long as some, maybe some small birds, like my little Belgian Dane rooster, Aubrey, who was 11, and Mina was 12 and a half. So, um... I said maybe that's maybe that was part of it. We did everything we could. I don't think it was anything we did or didn't do because we really treated her. We got her separated. We did all kinds of stuff to make her heal, and her body's just not. It didn't. It didn't form new skin like it should have done. Um, and she smells like gangrene. I swear she smells horrible, and she won't eat anymore. I think she's just dying. I think it's her time. She has a heart issue. She now has had a devastating injury. She's old. She's outlived three of her cookmates already, and. Um, you know, it is what it is. There's some things you can't, you do your best and you do everything. And I had good advice from people who know more than even, than I do about injuries and such. Um, and I did everything I could do. At the beginning, I gave her antibiotics because when I found the wound, I mean, we did everything we could possibly do for her, but she's old and I can't cure old age and I can't cure her heart. So, um, Bonnie will be leaving us pretty soon. I still have Axel. I don't know what to do with Axel. He's a precious, sweet little boy. And I put Ren in there with him sometimes, his, his, one of the hens he was hatched with. I put Ren in there with him sometimes during the day, but she likes to fly out and she don't want to stay in there at night. She wants to go back to the main flock, so I let her go back and, and I put her back in the next day. Um, so he has some company because he was with Bonnie and now he's going to lose Bonnie. And he can't be with her now anyway because she's dying, basically. And he's already hurt her one time. Um, not ac just by accident. I mean, he, he jumps, they grab a hold of the wings. He probably pu pulled it a little bit too much and it hurt her. And um, so... He wasn't that brave in the beginning. In the beginning, he left her alone. He was scared of big old Bonnie. She's huge. She looks huge. Let's put it that way. Her frame is huge. Her feathers are fluffy, but she weighs almost nothing underneath her feathers. You wouldn't know that if you didn't feel her keel bone and know there's no meat on it. She looks like a giant, healthy hen if you look at her, but she's not. Anyway, that's enough. That's a long video. Um, so, Michael, let me know when you get your... Your Afghans. You know, it's interesting. I told my husband, I said, man, I've had two giveaways lately. And I said, I think the comment picked her as sexist because it picked men. <laughs> it picked only men. <laughs> yeah, it's a sexist comment picker. Okay. Sorry, ladies. Um, but I just can't, I can't afford to mail a lot of these things. And I, I would probably do that. But, you know, I had an idea um, for, for getting rid of some of the things I've made that I just don't, you know, I don't know what to do with and I don't use myself. Um, I think I'm going to find a local nursing home or assisted living facility or something um, to donate crocheted blankets. The lap gans are perfect size. Some of them, the smaller ones, are perfect size for somebody sitting in a wheelchair or on the bed who just needs a little extra comfort. Um, and I think I'm going to donate my, a lot of my projects to the um, nursing homes. I don't know where a nursing home is off the bat. I know where a giant new assisted living facility is, but if they have part of that that's a nursing home, um, Maybe it could go to those people, but I don't know how much I have. I have to assess what I have, but I think that's what I'm going to do. Um, it's nice to express appreciation to my, to my subscribers by doing giveaways, but man, the post office is insane what they want for packages. It's crazy. So anyway, I can't keep doing that. I got too many repairs on this house to do right now. So anyway, I'll talk to you later. Have a great day.